Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about the branching hazard, uh, control hazard of the pipeline processor. So in last video, we have covered the pipeline processor, the basic idea of the pipeline processor, and we also uh, covered uh, the data hazards for pipeline processor, which is a really important concept. So we will do a real quick review for the data hazards for pipeline processor, and we'll introduce the branching hazard for pipeline processor, and how to uh, deal with uh, different types of hazards, how to solve the different types of hazards. Um, and then we will, um, maybe in this video or next video, um, <clears throat> we'll need to introduce uh, the uh, performance for pipeline processor. So how to calculate the performance, evaluate the performance for a pipeline processor is really important, really, really important. And that is uh, included in your midterm exam. It will be also included in your final exam. So even we don't have a particular quiz just for this topic, uh, I'll have to emphasize, because I plan to give you the midterm exam after we cover the branching hazards. Um, so there's no time for us to do one more quiz uh, for, for this particular topic. Uh, so you will only have it in the midterm exam. So I don't want to give you a midterm exam and a quiz at the same time. So that's why uh, even this topic is really, really important. So you don't have a quiz just for that, but you do have it in your midterm exam and you will have it in your final exam as well. So this is really, really important. This is really, really important uh, topic. Okay, so uh, I will do a couple example. Uh, after we finish the basic concept in introduction. Um, and then please remember print out the note of the video lecture before you watch the video. Uh, that's what, uh, that's, that's uh, how you could get, that's how you could get the examples of my handwriting note, uh, even it's super messy, sorry about that. Uh, but you could get my handwriting notes before you watch the video so that that would be helpful. Uh, also, you can use them as your like review material before you work on the midterm exam, uh, and also it's useful for your final exam as well. All right, so uh, let's have a quick look at what we did uh, last time. So we basically uh, talked about the pipeline processor, and then uh, we come out to the conclusion that the ideal uh, speed up for the pipeline the processor could be a number of stages, could be the number of stages, right? Uh, so if you have a five stage pipeline processor, that means originally your pipeline looked like this, and then you cut it into five pieces. You cut it into five pieces, and you stack them like this. You stack them like this, right? So ideally, uh, ideally, then you will have your pipeline processor um, processing all the instructions look like this, and then in each clock cycle, in each clock cycle, we're able to get like a one instruction done in average in average, right? Suppose you have many, many instructions, and then this will be da, 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 right? So you have a huge number of instructions, and then when you look at the timeline, when you look at the timeline, in each, in each, <clears throat> in each, clock cycle time, in each clock cycle time, then we should be able to get one instruction done in average, in average, right? So what does that mean? That actually means the ideal CPI, CPI, ideal CPI. So a cycle per instruction, cycle per instruction, ideal CPI for a pipeline processor should be one, should be one, right? So in average, if you have huge number of instructions and they're stacked, like this, they're stacked like this, a parallel the process, parallel the process. So then um, in every clock cycle, every clock cycle, right? So in every clock cycle, then we're able to get one instruction done. We're able to get one instruction done, right? So the ideal CPI for a pipeline processor should be one. The ideal CPI for a pipeline processor should be one, right? And then we talk about, um, the data hazards. Then we talked about the data hazards, right? 
So when we try to perform different types of calculation, and we're not doing all the same thing in each instruction. And for example, suppose we need to generate cer certain data and use it again in the future instructions. So then this is actually called data dependency. And that's the reason of the problem data hazards. So data hazards means the problem of data dependency when you try to uh, parallel, uh, pro while you try to uh, process, process all the instructions in parallel, uh, process the different instructions in parallel. And then the problem uh, caused by the data dependency is called data hazards. It's called data hazards. So you don't want to wait until you finish the first instruction to start your second instruction, right? So how to solve this kind of problem? Um, the, most favor, uh, the most famous the popular approach is called data forwarding, forwarding, okay? So instead of calculate the, uh, for example, addition in this particular example and finish the addition and put, it, put the result back into certain register, put the result right back, uh, write the result back into certain register, and then use it again, take it out from the register. So why not we don't need to write it back, right? We, we just skip the step of write it back and take it out. So you don't want to write it back to the register and take it out from the register again. Instead, you could just forward what the ALU calculated to the next step. Right, so your ALU result will be forwarded as the ALU input, and then the next instruction could directly get the ALU result and start the ALU calculation. So you don't have to actually put it back into the register and take it out from that register. Instead, you will just do a forwarding. Instead, you will just do forwarding. However, forwarding cannot solve all the problem. Forwarding cannot solve all the problem. So the hardware implementation for data forwarding is not required. I do put, I do have a couple slides here, but it's not required. So I just let you know, <clears throat> for whoever ha ha have the interest, uh, you could look at more detail in the textbook. Uh, also, you can um, talk with me, discuss with me, uh, through teams, uh, send me questions, whatever, but this is not required for our class. Uh, so that's like a too much hardware related. Um, so data forwarding cannot solve all the problem, and one type of special uh, data hazards cannot be solved by uh, data forwarding. Then it's called the load uh, use problem. It's called the load and the use problem. It's called the load and the use problem. So if you have a load instruction, try to take a piece of data from the memory, and then the next instruction following that is trying to use that piece of data, and this will be a big problem. Because initially your data could get uh, ready at the very last A stage of your uh, instruction uh, cycle, the whole uh, instruction cycle. So, so they, uh, the la very last machine cycle, the very last machine cycle, because they're trying to read from the memory, right? Uh, and then put it into a register. And then if you want to use it again, you need to take it out from that register. Of course, we do, we do not have to write it back into the register and then take it out from the register. However, anyway, uh, the, re the data is not ready after ALU, so you cannot do this kind of forwarding because your ALU doesn't get anything. Your ALU just calculates the address. You have to go all the way back to the memory to get the data, to get the data uh, before you perform any calculation, right? So how can we solve this problem? How can we solve this problem? Then we have to wait a little bit. Unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit. So this approach is called pipeline stall pipeline stall or pipeline bubbling, pipeline bubbling. So it's kind of like you add a certain bubble or store or knob doing nothing, just means like you have to wait a little bit time. You have to waste a little bit time in your pipeline, in your whole pipeline, right? So after we get the data from the memory, then of course we do not need to write it back to the register and then take it out from the register again. So we can immediately forward the data after you get it from the memory. We can immediately forward the data to the next step after you get it from the memory. However, remember your next instruction initially should look like this. You have the IF, ID, and the ALU calculation.
right? So you actually need that piece of data at the same time when you're trying to read that piece of data from the memory. They are at the same time. They are at the same time. So there's no way for me to forward it to an earlier time. So before you get that piece of data out, there's no way for you to forward it to somewhere else, right? So we need to pay attention. There's no way to forward data to an earlier time. So you have to wait a little bit. You have to wait a little bit because we need that piece of data uh, as an input to the ALU, as an input to the ALU. So we're trying to use that piece of data in the third cycle, but that piece of data is ready after the fourth cycle, after the fourth cycle. So we have to shift our second instruction to the right by one machine cycle, by one machine cycle, right? So that's the earliest time we can get that ready. That's the earliest time we can get that ready. So this, that's why it's called pipeline stall because you have to stall a little bit time. So uh, in summary, we have introduced the two special uh, strategies or approaches uh, to solve the data hazard. The first one is forwarding, and this is kind of like a really powerful uh, when you have the uh, use, use, ALU, ALU usage, ALU usage, uh, ALU usage. So this kind of data dependency. So for example, you are trying to use, use the data you generated uh, of the uh, ADD in the subtraction, and you're trying to use their subtractions result in the uh, OR or N or not. So you're trying to use uh, the, uh, the previous result in an ALU instruction, and your current uh, instruction is also an ALU instruction. So you have like ALU, 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 this kind of, uh, this kind of, um, usage, uh, this kind of instruction flow, then you can simply do forwarding to solve all the data hazards problem. However, if you do have, if you do have load plus use, load plus use, load plus use, this kind of problem, load plus use, this kind of problem, then you have to install certain bubble. You have to install one bubble for each load and use load and use, load and use, right? So for each load and use, it will cost you one, in one machine cycle stall. Each load and use will cost you one machine cycle stall. Right, and then if you have multiple of them, then of course you will have multiple machine cycle delay, and with multiple cycles delay, multiple cycles delay. And the third way to solve the data hazards we have introduced is called reordering the code reordering the code. So you may already think about that. Well, I don't really want to stall the pipeline. I, don't really, I do not really want to uh, delay the pipeline. Is there any better way I can solve with, I can solve the load and use problem? So there is a perfect example here. So for example, we're trying to perform uh, high level language B plus E equals A and B plus F equals C. So we're doing certain addition and addition again, and the data are actually stored in a piece of memory. So we have to load the data out. So we have load, load, ADD, and then later on we have load, ADD, a store. So you have like the load, load, ADD. Uh, so it's kind of like a load and use, load and use, right? And then later on you have another load and use. Later on you have another load and use. So the most important part for this particular example is when you look at the, the whole pipeline, suppose we're trying to implement the whole uh, instruction flow in the pipeline processor. And then I will have one load and use, load and use. I will have two of the load use problem. Two of the load use problem. Remember, if you have uh, ADD subtraction, ADD subtraction, and like the ADD use, so you have the ADD um, generate T3 and then you want to use T3 again to start it somewhere. So this is definitely no problem. This is definitely no problem because you can do simply forwarding. You can simply forward your result from the ADD. So if you are generating your result using the ALU, then it's easy for me to forward. It's easy for me to forward to the future instruction. However, if you have a load and a use, load and a use, this kind of problem, then how can we solve that without pipeline stall? So try to avoid the pipeline stall, then you could actually reorder the code, reorder the code, right? Sometimes it doesn't matter too much. 
for me to implement which instruction first, or which instruction second, because they are not related with each other. For example, when I look at the load and the use here, they are definitely related. And this load and use, they are definitely related. However, my first load and my second load, they are definitely not related. So the first load and the second load here, they are, sorry, the, third, the second load and the third load here, they are not, not related. They're not related, right? And then my ADD here and this ADD here, they are not related. They're not related. So I do have like a, a few instructions. They're not really related with each other. And how about if I move certain instruction to a different order and then I can, I can insert, I can insert something, some useful things into the bubble, into the bubble location. So originally uh, we're doing a pipeline style, something like this. So instead of doing nothing at this particular time, how about insert some useful information, useful work, insert some useful work here, right? So then you don't have to stall your pipeline. You don't have to store your pipeline. You don't have to waste the time. And then you already know the answer. Okay, so suppose I want to solve the problem of this load and use and this load and use. And of course, I need to install uh, some other unrelated, non-related instructions in between the first load and the ADD, the second load and the ADD. So I want to put something here and I want to put something here. As long as I can separate the first load use, the second load use, then I will have no problem to have a full speed pipeline, to have a full speed pipeline. So I can move the second, the third load, I can move the third load into this location, into the first, uh, under the first load use, uh, in, inside of the first load use, inside of the first load use. And remember, they're not related. They're not related. So it will not affect any other things. It will not affect any other things. And then, <clears throat> so the first load use got separated by the LW here, and the second load use also get separated. The second load use also gets separated uh, <clears throat> because you moved the load uh, to a, a couple instructions forward, uh, backward, a couple instructions back, backward. So they also got uh, separated. So that's a perfect solution to this problem, right? <clears throat> so I'll put five star in this example. Uh, so you will for sure see it in midterm exam and also final. And also final exam. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, so sometimes it's kind of like isolation, uh, or you know, <laughs> don't want to make that joke, but kind of like we put a little bit more social distance to the load and the ad, a little bit more social distance to the load and the ad, right? And then they all become safe. <laughs> they all become safe. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, in, the, in a summary, we, we introduced the three different uh, approaches to solve the data hazards for a pipeline processor uh, forwarding to solve the uh, pure uh, arithmetic logic calculation data hazards. And then sometimes you do have to do a stall. And for example, if you're not able to do um, the instruction reordering. If you, if you only have three instructions to, to work with, and then, <clears throat> or let's say if you have only two instructions to work with, and, uh, and they are load and use, load and use. So there's no way for me to reorder anything, right? So, so for some special case, then of course, it's not always possible, it's not always possible for you to reorder the instructions. Uh, but if you can reorder the instructions without changing the logic of the code, then you want to do that, of course. And if you're not able to do anything, then you have to put bubble. You have to put insert certain bubble in your pipeline. So that will be the pipeline stall. So in general, three different ways to handle the data hazards. And if you still remember, we did have uh, uh, talked a little bit about, in general, there's uh, two types of hazards 
One is called data hazards, one is called control hazards. So the, the basic two types of problems for a pipeline processor, for a pipeline processor. So what is control hazard? What is control hazard? Remember, so when, we when, when we're trying to uh, implement the uh, parallel processing using pipeline processor, then you can have all different types of instructions. So you do not only have like load and start and ADD subtraction, and you also have like some BQR branching, uh, kind of like a branching instructions, right? So suppose you have a certain branching instruction like this one, BQ, blah, blah. And then usually the BQ will have to tell you a label, a location where you jump to, where you jump to, right? So that actually means this is actually the most troublesome problem for a pipeline processor. And it's also one of the most challenging problem for modern processor right now. So all the different, uh, you know, CPU uh, manufacturers, uh, manufacturers uh, AMD, Intel, so they have like all different types of approach to handle this kind of problem. And it's still, uh, still a big problem, right? Uh, really most challenging problem for pipeline processor. So, um, so suppose you want to uh, implement a branching instruction and then you always uh, have like a label uh, to tell you where you want to jump to, where you want to branch to. So the next instruction being executed after the branching instruction is not determined, is not determined before you execute the branching instruction, right? Because you have to compare those two registers here to determine should I make a branch or not. So that actually means we really don't know which instruction should be executed following this instruction. And if we do things in parallel, that means before the branching instruction fin get finished, before the branching instruction get, get finished, we already fetched the next instruction, right? So the next instruction following the BEQ, which is the OR here, is actually fetched into the pipeline is already fetched into the pipeline. So you have already started this next instruction. And what if, if your next instruction should be another instruction because you want to jump to somewhere else? And then what will happen? This will cause a lot of problem, of course. So you did something wrong and you have to redo it. You have to redo it, right? So suppose without thinking, then we just, uh, you know, uh, do everything in parallel. So then the third instruction will get started here. The third instruction will get started here. The third instruction will get started here. Uh, and then if if we're st if, if we have already started the third instruction and then everything we did, everything we did before we figure out everything we did, everything we did in advance may be canceled or redoed. May, may have to be canceled, may have to be canceled, right? <clears throat> because you may did something which you don't want to, you don't want to do. You may did something which you don't want to do. So <clears throat> why I draw the figure like this? Because for, for the branch instruction here, the BEQ, you have to compare $1, $2, and then who tells you $1, $1, $2, are they, are they equal or not? So that's the ALU calculation. So only after the ALU calculation, then you can figure out if $1, $1, $2, they're equal or not. That means only after the third stage, then you actually know, should I make a branch or not? So only after the third stage, then you can know which is my next instruction which is my next instruction. And suppose your next instruction is not the OR here, is not the OR here, then you have to cancel everything you did with OR, everything you did with OR. So luckily you haven't finished OR, right? So you just did a part of the next instruction. You just did part of the next instruction. However, you have to cancel everything you, are, uh, you already did for the next instruction. And you may already started the third instruction uh, after the OR as well, uh, the fourth instruction after OR as well, and you have to cancel that part as well. So whatever you have done in advance has to be canceled if you did a wrong prefetch or pre-decoding. Uh, <clears throat> so this problem is called the data hazards, data hazards, right? So how can we solve the problem? Um, 
first of all, it may take a really long time. So to analyze this problem, it may take a really long time to determine what is my next instruction after the branching instruction, right? So for the previous example here, the branching instruction could know the answer of branch or not after the third stage. But suppose you have a really long pipeline, so you have many, many stages, and then you could get the answer of should I make a branch or not at a really late time, at a really late time, right? It depends on what kind of pipeline processor we're using. Remember, we're trying to understand in general <coughs> how this problem can be solved. So the branch, the branch result, the branch outcome, the branch outcome. So this actually means you know, which instruction get, should be executed after the BEQ, for example, right? So <clears throat> the branch result, the branch outcome, the branch outcome can be determined at a really late time, can be determined at a really late time, depends on what kind of processor, what kind of pipeline, how many stage you have, right? And we call this as uh, penalty, penalty. So later you will see the, uh, the explanation of this. Um, so they suppose suppose we always assume uh, always assume the next instruction following the branch instruction get execute executed get executed. So that means you know uh, without thinking, I'll just uh, stack the OR next to the BEQ stack the OR next to the BEQ. And the worst case is I have to redo, uh, have to redo everything I did. I have to redo everything I did, right? So I fetched the wrong instruction and I have to flush out all the, all the pro pro work I have done, all the work I have done. Suppose I made a wrong, I made a wrong prediction. So what does that mean by prediction? So, so the easiest way to solve this problem is, well, I don't know. I don't know what the branch outcome is. And what I will do is always assume, always assume the next instruction, right? I always assume the next instruction next to the branching instruction will be executed, will be executed. Well, the good case will be you're lucky and, and then everything is correct. So your prediction is correct. So the next instruction is executed and there should be no branch taken. There should be no branch taken. So you're not jumping to anywhere else because your branching uh, branch outcome is false. So you do not branch, you do not branch. And at a time your prediction is correct, your assumption is correct. So your pipeline can be processed in full speed. Your pipeline can be processed in full speed. However, if your assumption, if your assumption is not correct, if your assumption is not correct, that means everything you have done in advance, everything you have done in advance have to be canceled, have to be canceled, have to be redone. So you have to be, uh, have to redo those things, have to redo those things. So then we call this part as you know certain penalty. Of course, if you want to redo things, then it costs extra time. It costs extra time, right? So we have to refetch, we have to refetch the correct next instruction, the correct next instruction, and restart, restart, you know, the pipeline, restart the pipeline, right? So then you will have to have some store because you have to redo something, then it costs extra time. It costs extra time. So we call this part as the penalty. We call this part as the stall penalty. Stall penalty, okay? So um, this is like really kind of like not, not, not thinking too much, but it's one way we can solve the problem, right? So we always assume the next instruction get executed and suppose I did a wrong prediction, then I'll just pay my penalty, right? And if I did, maybe I'm lucky, maybe I'm lucky then uh, the branch is not always taken, the branch is, is always not taken, it's always not taken. So, so then, uh, you know, my pipeline is in full speed all the time, right? So, This is called the easiest way, easiest way, 
to uh, to to solve the uh, control hazard, control hazards or branching hazard or branching hazard. So the control hazard basically um, means branching hazards. Hazards, yeah. right? So uh, the easiest way to solve the branching hazards is always predict the branches are not taken. The branches are not taken. So assuming you know certain result of the branch, assuming certain result of the branch. Of course, this is not a good way, right? But let's uh, have a, a look of how it will work. So suppose we assume the branch is not taken all the time, and suppose my prediction is correct, so my assumption is correct, so the pipeline will be in full speed, right? So I have like the BQ here, and the BQ tells me jump to somewhere else, but I always assume it doesn't jump out. I always assume it doesn't jump out, so then my next instruction get executed uh, immediately after I have the BEQ started. And then suppose my prediction is correct and then the pipeline is in full speed. And if, unfortunately, if your prediction is not correct, if your prediction is not correct, then uh, what I did for my load, so I already did something in load and something in the low, uh, the next instruction after this. So I already started part of the, you know, the this part, part of this. I already started part of this, right? So in this, in this location. And then those things have to be canceled. Those things have to be canceled, right? So you have to flush out those things in your pipelines. So you have to redo, erase all the results you generated and restart your pipeline again with the correct instruction, with the correct instruction. And by what time you can know the result of your branch instruction after the ALU here. For this particular example, after the ALU compare $1, $2, then we should be able to know, well, uh, the branch is taken. Uh, okay, so I did something wrong, so I have to cancel what I have done already for the following instructions. So I have to flush out all the, all the, all the temporary result, flush out the temporary result from my pipeline, from my hardware, and then refetch, refetch the correct instruction, which is, you know, for example, OR. So refetch the correct instruction, right? So, um, Uh, I just uh, uh, copied uh, another example, uh, the, the last example uh, to after this um, concept. So it, it's better to look at the example. It will it will be uh, clear to understand the, the the prediction of the branching. So for example, if we have like a, a super long um, pipeline, super long pipeline, right? So then you could have you know. Uh, so the for for the previous example, this one. I think it's not really um, clear. So um, I will show you one more example, then everything will be clear. So this one, um, there's only a few instructions here. I don't know, what, I don't know where I can draw my a bigger figure. So let's, let's look at this one. Suppose the branch can be resolved in the nth stage and you have like a, you know, a, a really uh, long pipeline. So you have six stages. For each instruction, you have to uh, uh, spend six clock cycle, for example. And then suppose you can know the result of the branch after the, um, see, um, fifth, after the fifth stage. So one, two, three, four, five, Fifth, right? So suppose you have to spend six clock cycle, suppose you have to spend six clock cycle for each instruction and after the fifth after the fifth clock cycle then we know we know the branch result we know the branch result outcome so we have to finish five, five clock cycles to understand if the branches should be taken or not and then suppose we don't know that again and the instruction three suppose this is a branching instruction and then we have to spend one, two, three, four, five 
five clock cycles. After the fifth clock cycle, then we know the branch should be taken or not. And suppose we didn't do any advanced approach and we simply always assume the branch is not taken. So we always assume the branch is not taken. Then what we have done already at the fifth clock stage is four, four steps of the next one, three steps of next, uh, the, the following one, and two steps after that, and one step after. So we have already done four steps for instruction four, three steps for instruction five, and two steps for instruction six, and one step for instruction seven. And all those things, are, all those things are meaningless because you did something wrong and those things have to be flushed out flushed out you have to cancel all the work you have done in advance you have to cancel all this work you have done in advance right so how can we cancel them we call it flushed those instructions flush out those instructions okay so the hardware uh, implementation is now required but i do have a couple slides in uh, and in the textbook there's a lot of detail uh, details about how to flush out the instruction but Simply, you can remember uh, uh, re uh, and stand it at uh, you have to cancel all those things you have already done, right? So after the fifth stage, then we know we have to, you know, redo things. So all the things we have done in advance have to be canceled. And I have to refetch the correct instruction at that time, right? So you can refetch only after the orange line here, right? Only after the orange line here. So that's the time we could refetch. And then, okay, so suppose I start to refetch the correct instruction and do the pipeline again, starting at this point, starting at this point, and then what will happen? You cost some extra, it, it does cost some extra time for us to flush out the instruction we have done in advance, right? And we call this as the penalty, as the penalty of the uh, branching, branching prediction. And our simple prediction is always predict the branch is not taken, right? And we call this as the, 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 the official name term is called branch penalty, branch penalty. So how much is the branch penalty? How much is the branch penalty? So if you are able to resolve or you are able to know the result of the branch, at the fifth stage, at the fifth stage, then the delay we have to pay for a wrong prediction. For a wrong prediction. Is five minus one stages. Is five minus one stages. Cycles cycles right so you can immediately see that you know the mm, maybe i can use another color yeah this first stage of the instruction 15 you know the ideal case could be at here at here right and then of course there's no way for us to know the answer so so we did something wrong and i have to pay extra time one two three four for extra time. So it's kind of like you shift the next instruction by five clock, uh, four clock cycles, four clock cycles. So that's why if your branch can be resolved in the nth stage, then the branching penalty is n minus one clock cycle. The branching penalty is n minus one clock cycle. All right, so for the previous example, suppose the branch can be resolved uh, at the third stage, at the third stage, and then the branching penalty will be 400, 400 PS because it's a minus one, two stages, two stages, two stages. All right. Uh, so, control hazards. Um, The hardware implementation is now required, as I told you. So I will just skip that part. And we, I, want, I would like to um, talk about some more advanced branching prediction approaches. So uh, I will put that in the next video. I'll stop here for a minute and then I will record another video about the dynamic branch prediction. <laughs>